Hey guys, Dave here for the Reptile Channel Herpers TV. So right now I am standing in one of the coolest reptile facilities in the world. This is Kevin McCurley's nerd here in New Hampshire. So Kevin works with everything. I mean everything. If it's a reptile, Kevin works with it. And one of the coolest things that he has around here is his monitor lizard collection. He has T-positive albinos. He has T-negative albinos. He has black Asian water monitors. So Kevin McCurley is the monitor guy, but he also has a method for getting these animals to be just dog tame, just completely handleable like a little puppy. And Kevin's going to share with us a little bit about how he handles these animals and how he works with these animals to get his monitor lizards dog tamed. So guys, I am really excited about this episode. Let's go check out Kevin McCurley's monitors here on the Reptile Channel, Herpers TV. That's awesome. Look at that. So when they come down, we'll get to we'll get a better look to see what they're like. That's four right in there. That's awesome. Unceremoniously. Dude, he's a chubster. He's uh, he's one he's uh, he's over sixteen years old. He's no, let's go up here. Come on, go up there. He's a big boy. I'm gonna tear your shirt. So I don't even try to make them too big because uh, you can kill these guys by overdoing it. Of course. And uh, you know, they're not getting you know, nearly the activity that they would get in the wild because you know, food is basically made available to them all the time. Uh, you better not crap. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, he's but totally gonna crap. He's, <laughs> he's like, you've messed with me. But it's just a wonderful, wonderful animal. I think I remember this one from the yeah. last time I was here. He was here. Yeah, and I think I have a... God, I'll have to go back and look, but I think that I've got like some really good images of you in this in this brood. Yeah, he's... How old did you say he was, 16? He's, he's, yeah, he's about 16 years old. That's some of the oldest water monitors. What a brute. We... A brute and a butte. Yep. You can just look at some animals and see, yeah. you know, the intelligence in them and their mind working and them trying to figure things out. And Very bird-like. Yeah. You watch yeah. the pupils and stuff. What's next in Kevin's uh, let's see. mystery oh. cages of Let's see. Of I wonder. can show you. Right, you want to just, okay. Here's a tea positive. Hi, sweetie. Okay. So, so now we're looking at tea positive. So if you start, let's say if you look at the tail. See that right there? You're starting to see this animal, as this animal grows, it doesn't add melanin. So there's a shed on here, you can see where this dark area, that's where shed is. But then where the shed comes off, it's getting lighter and lighter. So these animals go through a major um, color change. This is a female. They are a bit dimorphic and often the males are the ones that are a little bit more dramatic looking. But I just picked her up because she's a doll. But you can see she's going through this color change and she'll start lose losing all of this on her shoulder and back. I'll pull out a smaller one too. This is not even like, you know, I wouldn't say this is a really a great re representation of a T-positive. This is, this is a very um, average animal as far as aesthetics and, you know, the appearance, but I love her. She's like a, just a doll. Real good brain on that. She's uh, very uh, interactive and very inquisitive. So I'll get you another one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that cutie. Look at that little dude. So you can see how much melanin they start with, and then it just changes so dramatically. Yeah. He's scared, but, so at this point, they're, they're, when they're, they're babies, they can be really frantic until you pretty much win them over. So this animal right here, 
I have not won over. So this animal is just like learning to, to tolerate me. It's not biting, but he's doing a lot of, uh, you know, just running away and erratic behavior. And this is what we we want to defeat because this is, you know, this is far from what this animal can really be. Right. But you, they have to start somewhere. When they come out of the egg, these guys often they'll just they'll like bite. All right. So how old is this one? Uh, this is literally a few weeks. Just a few weeks old. Yes. Yeah. Just probably under a month. And you can see on the tail. So you can see this this light area, and they have it on the toenails. But oh, we'll pull, pull out some bigger ones when they come down. Yeah. Okay. So that one's just a couple of weeks old. Yeah. So just under a month, I would say. Okay. Yeah. All right. So who's this little guy? This is a this is a dirty that's a dirty tea paws. <laughs> you see, it's traumatized. Oh, he's so traumatized. Oh. So, and they're so mean and nasty. Well, once you once you get really social with these guys, you can pretty much do anything. And there's like biting is just not even on the menu. It's they just don't do it. They they're, don't feel the need. Now to. they're they're completely desensitized by everything. And but this little thing has such a brain on it. Uh, I don't even care what color it is, so much as the personality. But the way this animal's reacting to me says so much and that's that's actually my reward is when you get to go in here and, and invade this guy's space and mess with it and you don't they instantly know the difference between your hand and and so i can grab his tongue food and everything and they just there's just no ill will towards you whatsoever uh, it comes from years of working with them yeah but and building up trust with them and we have you can go to the same behavior over and over and over again. All right, so this is a T negative. This is a T negative. Oh, look at that big boy. That's a female right there. And how old does this go? She is, she is now probably about four, four years old. What a honey. All right, so, well, I mean, obviously you have some of the most incredible monitor lizards here, but is anybody else working with these monitor lizards like you are and breeding these specific morphs and working with them to get them, you know, to be tame and trust you? Is anybody else doing what you're doing? Well, I do know. So Chris from Vital Exotics and, and Jim Heck, I think uh, Chris has a T negative. Um, obviously I've been breeding and selling T positives for, uh, for years now. so. There's other people that have them now, but um, as far as production, it's me, so. That's what I thought, yeah. Okay, good. This is a het black dragon. You want to come here for a sec? A het black dragon. So, okay, so, so black fine. dragon is uh, so if we were looking at something, let's say like a like a lesser platinum, and the you know blue eye leucistic is a super lesser platinum in ball pythons. Right. So, or like a pastel and a super pastel ball python. This is incomplete dominant the gene. So we're going to have the basically I'll show you black dragons that are you know they're all melanistic and black. This is a, a, just a gene carrier. So if I looked at this visually, so I could just look at her and tell, you know, she's, she's a, you know, from the breeding, she's a het black dragon, but they look darker. So it's incomplete dominance versus recessive. Gotcha. Here you go, there's a black dragon. Oh, so that's the full, full expression. Kind of looks like a big black roughneck. Kind of, yeah. Tiny. So she's just playing with Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get up too fast, Rob. Come here. Oh, that is just a great looking dragon. Come here. There's there's some really nice ones in this cage. Nice. This is a T negative albino. So so, uh, so basically the melanin on this is basically off. Whereas I breed obviously a lot of T positives, and the T positives have. Uh, greatly reduced melanin, but it, they still have it on. This is, uh, you know, straight up just uh, T negative, and I can show you T positives. But if I show you adult T positives and T negatives, you're going to think they're the same, right? Because they they literally 
look just like each other. So the, the T negatives are really remarkable as babies and T positives are obviously still remarkable, but not as remarkable as the T negative. But as they grow, it kind of changes and they kind of just equalize. It's really weird. I think it's one of the, the best vessels as far as, you know, if you're gonna deal with lizards, you know, obviously lizards that get large, uh, Varana Salvatore, which is the Asian water monitor, this is, this is, this is it. This has got all the brains. These guys uh, know you very well. They know you by sight, smell, everything. And they can instantly tell a stranger like in seconds. But once you socialize them, so basically uh, socialize, we use that instead of saying friendly because friendly means, you know, like, you know, I guess you'd be putting on something that is really not something that you would say a reptile is. It's basically when I say it's social, it, it's learned to trust you. And that's the most important thing. So when it learns to trust you, you're actually getting to see the animal as it is in life, not an animal in like a fearful state, not an animal like uh, waiting to run away or waiting to bite you or waiting to eat or something like that. So you have an animal like this that's actually thinking. So this animal is just, it's really just enjoying this interaction. So there's, you know, different sights and sounds and this animal is literally taking in all that. So this animal's thinking, but there's really no, has no fear of me. So there's not a lot of flinching or anything like that. So we're, we're seeing the animal as it really is. And the problem is, a lot of times when we're dealing with reptiles, we're dealing with animals when they're fearful and they're scared. And when we start doing that, we're not actually seeing the animal for what it is. And we mistake uh, certain behaviors for, for other reasons and we don't actually realize how remarkable and intelligent they are. So when you kind of see them a little bit differently like I do, I start realizing more and more. And I work very hard to socialize these guys and I have a lot of little tricks that I do. But it's basically, I, I have something called building threads. And uh, when I'm interacting with a little animal like this, when they come out of the egg, they're just, they want to bite. They're, they're scared. They're really at the bottom of the food chain. So nature is basically designed them to be fearful of everything. You know, fish, frogs, every kind of wading bird is going to want to eat them. Certainly other water monitors. So what we do is you have to convince them that you're not there to hurt them. And by having short little episodes where you literally you come in and you do one little thing where the animal doesn't lose its cookies. It can think for a second. You go in, you go into the cage, and say you touch it, and then you remove yourself from the cage. That's a threat. So what you've done, you've just basically built a positive episode with the animal. And I might do that throughout the day, just periodically just going in there and, and uh, investigating that animal. And as you keep doing that, you get you learn, or actually the animal learns more and more that it can trust you and that you're not a harmful thing in its life. And so I just keep doing that and eventually you, you uh, develop this relationship with an animal where you never have to worry about getting bit or anything like that. You have to basically develop trust. So the animal has to trust that you're not gonna hurt it and you're not gonna do anything bad to it. So every time I interact with an animal, I try to leave it in a very positive episode. So we do these, uh, so we do these threads. The trick is to, if you're gonna invade the animal space, get into the animal space don't freak it out. Be very aware of where the animal is psychologically. So if I go in the cage and the thing is just terrified of me and I just push myself onto the animal, I'm going to actually develop a bad thread. So I'm actually going to enforce the negative of that animal. So I have to basically figure out how to get into that animal's life and just do something. It could be literally five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever, where I can get in there, I do something, and then I get out of the cage and the animal then gets to reflect that nothing bad happened to me. And then I'll repeat that and repeat that. And very quickly, I'll start having longer episodes. So I might start with like five seconds. And then before long, I'm gonna be able to have maybe 20 seconds or 30 seconds and a minute. And each one of those things were like a little positive thread. So all those threads collectively are basically creating rope. And that's ultimately what allows you to do those kind of things with these animals. Um, I'm very different than other people, how they do the monitors and stuff like that and uh, slowly people have started realizing what I was doing. And um, when I was doing it, I didn't really realize I was doing it. Like it was just like something that I was doing and I didn't really think about what other people or how they perceived things and stuff like that. And so some of my friends would come over here and just make comments to me. And like, how come yours are like whatever? So I started kind of like realizing, okay, we are doing something differently. And then I just kind of continued doing that. And then I started like uh, showing other people what I'm doing. And uh, that has really changed a lot of uh, how people are at least viewing Varana Salvatore as far as uh, how, what a great pet 
it can make. They really can be like, it's like a significant you know, member of your family if you do it right. And if you know people that have gotten my animals or something like that, you said your friend and he yep. loves his monitor. Yeah, he does. That's, that's a success story. That I just love that. So basically just learn like, you know, th through years and years of insight dealing with these animals, like how to basically manage their intellect. And as I'm making great successes, I'm learning more and more. So clearly I have a lot more to learn. But the more I learn, the more I'm able to do with these animals and therefore I'm more able to show other people what you can do with these animals and then it expands it.